Howdy. Welcome back to Adventure in Art. I'm Ben Staley. I appreciate you stopping by. This is one of my favorites yet. And uh, the theme is adventure because the unexpected definitely happens. The sub theme is the circle of life. And if you watch the whole thing, you're going to understand why. None of that really matters. Basically, I go out and I shoot a couple rolls of film and I'm going to share my process with you. Side note, this also contains one of my personal favorite of all time video transitions. I hope you can spot it. Let's go. So the M6 is my favorite camera. It is my go everywhere, take everywhere, no matter what camera. I haven't been shooting much film uh, because of the current situation. And uh, you know, I've, I'm a full-time filmmaker. That's how I make my living. And there's been no work for a couple months. So I am not spending any money anywhere that I don't have to, because that seems like the most responsible thing to do. So paying for film developing has not been in the budget. But on this morning, as I took our little dog up to the park to do her business and I passed the local pool, there was a family of ducks in the pool and frankly, I couldn't resist. It was a little overcast out, so I put in a roll of T-Max 400. T-Max is my favorite black and white film. Usually shoot 100. I'm about to find out that I probably should have put in 100 here because the sun comes out right away. Okay, here we are. There's the duckies. And I didn't have a plan here. I just wanted to get cool shots of the ducks. Right away, I learned that Mama Duck does not want her duckies anywhere near me. <laughs> Run away! That's okay, I'm patient. I kind of follow them around the pool here for a few times. But she just does not want anything to do with me, period. You can see it's a little overcast if you look. Oh, she just yelled at me. She just barked at me. She quacked at me. But the uh, the clouds are breaking up and it, the sun is starting to come out. You see there's actually a shadow there. And this is about the time that my battery for my meter in my camera starts running low. Now the M6, you can use it without a battery. It's a fully manual camera. That's why I love it. But you can't meter without a battery. And I haven't used the darn thing in a couple months and my battery is dying. Here, ducky ducky. So about this time, now I'm just sort of metering on gut. I mean, I already know what it is, but the sun comes out, it's a little brighter. I stop down. Sun goes away, I open it up a little bit, and I'm kind of guessing from this point on and hoping that I'm not embarrassing myself with some poorly exposed photographs. Now look, I'm, I've, I've set the focus and I'm trying to get the camera low to get a shot with the out of focus uh, water in the foreground. I don't know, I don't know if it really worked, but that's what I was trying to do. They do not want to be anywhere near me. Hmm, perhaps we need a new strategy. Now the pool's been locked up because of the situation. And there's always ducks in the pool in the springtime. Um, but they don't last long because as soon as it warms up, people start getting in the pool. But this year the pool's locked up. In fact, I actually had to scale that wall there in the back just to get in the darn thing. And uh, so this, anyways, Mama Duck has stayed longer this year because there's no one in the pool and it looks like she actually had some babies. Now my plan is to just lay here for a while and hope that they forget about me. And if I'm really still, she doesn't, she, she forgets and maybe they just meander over closer to me and I can snipe a good shot. That's my plan. And I'm just chilling out. My meter is dead. And uh, I'm willing to wait a while. A few neighbors walk by and they give me some funny looks through the bars of the front gate. And I am just really hoping that no one decides to call these security guards. Just what I need. Hey, there's a guy in the pool. He's not supposed to be there. 
I got bored laying around. Decided to photograph a feather. That's my favorite shot. I like that shot. Come on, Mama Duck. She is staying as far away from me as humanly duckily possible at all times. <laughs> oh, we have some visitors. Now these are mallards, and those are male mallards. You can tell they have the green head. So two males have just landed in the pool, and boy, he is going after her. This is nature, folks. Now mallard number two says, I'm getting out of the pool. But mallard number one, male mallard, number one, I guess Mama here is his girlfriend or wife or something. This is uh, this is some other nature, folks. This is how it goes down. Nature is not pretty. It's not friendly, and it's not soft and comfortable. And there's no mood lighting. I don't know if she liked that or not, but she's letting everybody know something. I don't speak duckies, so I don't know. I don't know the situation here. She just needs to take a minute and collect herself. I'm going to get some shots of the male ducks, and they do not want to be on camera. Okay, well, now we're back to just the mama and her ducklings. It's the same story. That's about as close as I'm going to get, I think. I decide for one last ditch effort to try and run up on her. Oh, that was that was some excellent photography there, Staley. That was a, an award winner right there. She is not having it. She's a good mama. She yelled at me. I feel bad. I don't want to scare him. I was hoping I could get him to come closer. Got seven or eight shots left. And my meter battery is dead. I think maybe I'll come back this evening. Knock off the rest of these shots. See if they're still here. The babies aren't going anywhere. Maybe I can sneak in and stay a little longer. I'm hungry. And I have to pee. I don't want to pee in the pool. That's uh that's bad business. Cute little buggers so. though. Well, I came back later, and all the ducks were gone. And this is mysterious, and this leads me to believe that someone came along and scooped up the baby ducks, and I don't know if they were able to scoop up Mama Duck, but they either relocated them or killed them. I hope it was the former. Uh, there is a big pond about a mile down the road, and there's always a lot of ducks in that pond. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping someone came along, scooped up all the ducks, and relocated them to a safer place. Unfortunately, I never got my duck shots, so I decided to hit the road, drive down into this canyon, and head up this trail that I have never been up. Still got the rest of this roll of film to burn off, and I need to stretch my legs. Now, I come out in this area a lot, and I hike around, and I shoot, and I explore, but I've never been up this trail. It kind of just heads higher and higher up into these rolling hills. This is federal public land. We're about 45 minutes north of Hollywood, but there ain't anybody here. And I had come out here a couple weeks earlier. It was all moody clouds and the colors were bright and I was gonna shoot a roll of Portra. And I got to the trailhead and there was a bunch of dirt bikers, guys with motorcycles, and I just didn't wanna be around that. So I bailed, but I've been itching to come up here. And here we are. 
They don't have quite the cool moody lighting, but I'm gonna see what I can see. See what kind of pictures I can take. Basically a lot of flowers. I'm mostly a portrait photographer, so today we're taking flower portraits. This is not something I regularly do. And I am totally open to the challenge. Let me know what you think of my flower pictures. Really getting into summer now and in a month or so this is not going to be possible or it's not going to be as comfortable it's already pretty hot out right now but in a month or two we get in the middle of the summer it's going to be it's going to be 100 degrees until the sun sets which is not conducive to hiking around late in the day because the sun is lower, we have that nice directional light. The trail just keeps climbing up and up and up. I feel really fortunate that I can drive, you know, 20 minutes from my front door and park my truck and go on a hike like this. And we're really close to Hollywood or downtown Los Angeles. So if I didn't have this kind of close access to, to getting out there, it would be really tough. Okay, look what I'm doing. I'm pointing the camera down at the ground. Now I'm framing up my shot. And what I do is I'm metering off a darker spot. If you meter off the sun hitting all that grass and, the, and how bright the sky is, you're probably going to underexpose your image. So what I'll do is that the meter is center weighted, which means it takes up area in the center of the frame and that's, that's where it meters. So I will always meter for the shadows and try and find the darkest thing that will be in the frame. I point the camera at that, I point the meter at that, and that's how I set my exposure. And if you watch close, you're going to see me do that several times here because when the sun gets that low and it's coming right into the lens, it's really easy to underexpose and you can't get that detail back out of the shadows when you're, when you're shooting film, especially black and white film. And that was my last shot of T-Max. So I'm going to take a break here, get some water, and put in some new film. When I did this, okay, confession, you ready for a confession? I had recorded a bunch of, of me talking to the camera, almost vlog style, which is something I don't do, but I thought I'd try it. Well, I had an external mic on my camera and apparently the battery was dead. Are we sensing a theme here? Yes. So all that audio, there's no audio. So that's why I'm doing voiceover. Okay, did you see that first picture I took? I put in a roll of Portra 400. Now I set the meter on my camera to 200. That means I'm overexposing for one stop. Now I do this a lot. I will overexpose color film. I typically just set my meter for box speed and then I just kind of, I look at what I'm shooting and I just move the aperture uh, to, uh, you know, whatever degree I need to, to overexpose the image a stop or half a stop or two stops or whatever I want to do. Uh, but here, just to keep me in check, I've actually set the, the meter on the camera set the ISO dial uh, to a stop slower so that uh, I don't really have to think about it. I'm excited to see what the portrait will do out here with this golden light and uh, you know it's a real real contrasty situation. Portrait is not a real contrasty film. I'm curious to see what we get.
Now I'm pointing the camera at the ground. I'm getting a meter from the shadows, or a reading from the shadows, and then back to my subject. Ooh, okay, that's nothing super special. Let's try something else. Looks like vertical. Okay, now that is my favorite shot out here. And look at that. We have the overexposed at the top. We've got the deep shadows at the bottom, and we have that awesome Leica Sumacron flare. I have a 50 millimeter Sumacron on my M6. It's an amazing lens. It renders the bokeh just beautifully. Uh, I love the contrast. I'm not really gonna uh, speak, whoa, hey, what's this? A GoPro battery in the middle of the trail. Maybe those dirt bikers a couple weeks ago dropped this. I'm always super happy to find more booty and gear. I mean, you can never have too many GoPro batteries. And spoiler alert, I took this sucker home cleaned it up, I plugged it in and charged it, and now I've got an extra GoPro battery. Boom, score. That's worth the price of admission right there. What else do we have in the trail? A lizard. There's a crap load of lizards out here in, in, in this part of Southern California, and rattlesnakes and all that stuff. So. I am always super stoked to see lizards and snakes because where I come from, which is rural Alaska, there was no lizards and snakes. And I've been here 20 years, but it's still super cool to see them. This guy is dead. We are really seeing the circle of life in this video. He's a one dead little lizard. I don't know what happened, but I'm gonna get a picture of him. I grew up way off the grid in Alaska, no electricity, no running water, no indoor plumbing. That was the first 18 years of my life, so seeing lizards and snakes is cool. Now there's the view looking sort of northward. That's Castaic Lake back there. It's a man-made lake. It's dammed up. Just a lot of empty rolling hills. It would have looked much like this 100, 200, 1,000 years ago, minus the trails, of course, but it's pretty, pretty rugged barren country. A lot of critters out here, a lot of coyotes, again snakes, lizards, bunny rabbits, bobcats, and this is lion country. There's definitely lions out here. This is the main reason that I'm not gonna stay after dark. Not really worried about lions, but you don't want to tempt fate. So we're just gonna hang out here at the top of the hill and get some more flower portraits. Look at those uh, portrait colors. Beautiful. Little flare there. Uh, that's not super even. I like this shot better. Sumacron's a beautiful lens. It is just about to be sunset. This is the last of the good sunlight. There's Castaic back there in the in the background. Probably come two or three miles. Not terribly far. Getting a few last frames before I head back. It's gonna take me a bit to get back to the truck and I don't want to do it in total dark. I want to have a little bit of light. Just framing up, you know, with the rangefinder, you can't you can't see how the lens is going to flare. So I'm always trying to get that flare in the frame if I'm shooting into the sun, and I've kind of learned how to position the camera and where to put the sun in the frame. Sometimes you get it, sometimes you don't. The joy I get from film photography is the experimental aspect of it. I don't, I can't chimp, I can't look at the screen. I don't know what I'm getting. I don't know till sometimes weeks later when I get the film developed. So I'm always shooting with something in mind, you know, how is this going to come out? How is it actually going to be framed up? I'm not even looking through the lens. If I'm shooting into the sun, which I like to do, I'm trying to get that flare in there. I don't mind imperfections in the frame. That's part of the magic to me. The reason I shoot film is because I don't know what I'm getting in the moment. And oftentimes my favorite pictures are a little bit accidental or they have a surprise in there that I could not have planned for or counted on and that's the joy for me that's why I shoot film 
the sun is about to be gone. You don't have to go far to have an adventure. You don't have to go to some faraway jungle or some high peaks. You can have adventures in your backyard. Find a trail you haven't been down and head down it. Find a road you've never been down. Take a left turn, go for a walk, be safe. Be compassionate, be brave. Who knows what you'll find? Bring your camera or don't. Observe, listen, learn. There's the last shot. Thanks for watching, folks. I hope you liked it. Leave me a comment. I like to hear your comments. I like to hear, hear your thoughts. What did you think of the video? What did you like? What didn't you like? What pictures did you like? Did anything there stand out for you? If you did like it, give it a like. If you haven't, please subscribe. There's more to come, folks, and I appreciate you tuning in. Be safe out there.